بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's uh, lesson which is the uh, continuing for the expansion units from 1 to 4 reading pages 68 and 69 So you can tell from this uh, picture that we will be reading about uh, colors of course every one of us has his own favorite uh, color and the least favorite uh, color so what's your favorite color and why what's your favorite uh, color and why for example me my favorite color is maybe either black or white because it goes with everything that I try to wear if I wear a black shirt it goes with uh, every color uh, every other color for the pants that I wear and also same with the white so what's your favorite color try to think about this then try to answer the question why why is this your favorite uh, color if you choose either red uh, green or blue orange etc so try to think why is this color your favorite color so what's uh, what color is the room you are in now how does the color make you feel so uh, you're sitting in, uh, you're sitting in your room now look at the walls look at the furniture what color is the room you are in what color are the walls are the furniture the carpet and how does this color make you feel how does this color make you feel when you look at it, uh, this color there's a feeling inside you how do you feel about this uh, color the second question have you ever painted a room if so what color did you choose and why have you ever painted your room and if so uh, uh, what color did you choose and why or if you are planning to paint your room which color would you choose and why is uh, that for for me i prefer bright colors for my room to make the room uh, uh, brighter either uh, the uh, bright blue or maybe bright green just to make the room uh, much more brighter than the uh, usual so try to think of the uh, of the color that you want to paint your room with so the psychology of color this is the uh, title of the article we're going to read about just about now the psychology of color of course there is a, a whole science about uh, colors and how do people react to uh, colors uh, so there's a whole psychology about colors so for example the question that I just uh, asked you which color would you paint your room with there are specialists that uh, choose for you because they are uh, uh, they are specialists as I said to choose the uh, the perfect color for you so it's not an easy matter the psychology of color this is the article we're going to listen now let's listen to it together I want you to imagine yourself in a room painted a light blue color now imagine yourself in a vibrant red room do you think you would feel differently in each of these rooms if you are like most people you would feel calmer in the blue room and more energized in the red room. Why is this? Psychological studies have found that different colors can have different effects on mood and behavior. People have a tendency to associate colors with where these colors appear in nature. So, for example, without realizing it we associate soft shades of blue with the sky and sea. These associations make blue a calming color for most people. Asuka Obata runs a spa in Kyoto, Japan. All the walls of the salon are blue. Obata says, it is essential that we create a sense of peace and tranquility. The color blue helps us achieve this. Red, however, is associated with fire and blood. So red is also associated with danger and vitality. The color red has even been shown to raise blood pressure. Adrian Vilas of Cordoba, Argentina, painted his office red. He says, I like being surrounded by a color that gives me energy and inspiration. On the other hand, have you ever wondered why traffic lights and stop signs utilize the color red? To warn of danger, of course. So here he says, 
Uh, I want you to imagine yourself in a room painted in a light blue color. Now imagine yourself in a vibrant red room. So when you're sitting in a blue room, a bright, uh, uh, a bright uh, blue room or a red room, of course you will feel uh, differently. The mood will change. Uh, if you are like most people, you would feel here, he says, calmer in the blue room and more energized in the red room room because the uh, blue color makes you much calmer unlike the red color which gives you more energy why is this psychological studies have found that different colors can have different effects on mood so colors actually can affect your mood for example here he says people have the tendency to associate colors with where these colors appear in nature of course we associate colors to nature when you think the word nature immediately you think of the color blue or green blue or green blue as in the sky green as in the trees so when i say the word nature immediately you think of the color Green, uh, green. So, for example, without realizing it, we associate uh, soft shades of blue with sky and the sea. So, we associate blue with the skies and also the sea. Uh, uh, here, the uh, spa, the Asuka Obata runs spa in Kyoto, Japan. They chose this for their salon the color blue because you want to relax in there, which is why they chose the color blue. Unlike here, the color red. However, it's associated with fire and blood. That's why the red color attracts your attention, attracts your attention. That's why the traffic lights, they chose the red color for uh, stop because uh, to warn of danger, of course, all the warnings in the world, you see it with red color because it's associated with danger. So let's continue here with the article, the second part of the article. Let's listen now. While we all share natural associations with certain colors, the same color may have a very different meaning to people of two different cultures. The colors black and white provide a good example of how people can have different cultural responses to colors. In many cultures, black symbolizes death and mourning, and so black is the traditional color worn to funerals. However, in Asia it is not black that represents mourning, but white. So in Asia, White is the color people usually wear when they attend funerals. In most other cultures, far from being associated with funerals, white represents purity, innocence, and goodness. For this reason, white is traditionally worn by brides in these cultures. However, in China, since white is the color of mourning, it is important that a bride not wear white. Instead, the traditional color worn by a bride in China is red. In Chinese culture, red represents happiness and good luck, and so Chinese celebrations are full of red. During the Chinese New Year, people prefer wearing red to any other color and older family members give money in red envelopes to younger members of the family. So here in this article, they're talking about the uh, white and black colors. Uh, when people w uh, go to funerals, they wear the black color to show their sadness. This is unlike in Asian cultures where they uh, wear the white uh, color for the uh, funerals. Here they say, here they say black symbolizes death and mourning. That's why most cultures in the world, when they go to funerals, they uh, wear the black uh, color unlike in Asia, it is not black that represent mourning, it is white is the color people usually to wear when they attend funerals. In most other cultures, far from being associated with funerals, white represents purity, innocence, and goodness. When you think the color white, you instantly think with uh, purity and goodness. You think positive thoughts. For this reason, white is traditionally worn by brides. That's why brides usually wear the color white because it represents goodness and purity. In those cultures, however, in China, since white is the color of mourning and funerals, it is important that the bride don't wear white. Instead, the traditional color wear by a bride in China is red. So, because in Asia, especially in China, they wear white to funerals, 
in the in the wedding the bride wears red in chinese culture red represents happiness and good luck red represents happiness and good luck and so chinese celebrations are full of red during the chinese new year people prefer wearing red to any other color and all their family members give money in red envelopes to younger members of the family also the chinese flag is in the color red so in china it's different there the uh, the uh, the white is for the funerals the red is uh, the red color is represents the happiness in their uh, uh, in their happy meetings they give each other money in red envelopes let's continue with this article the last part of the article clearly the way we respond to color is a complicated business. You may think you are choosing a red shirt just because you like the color. But the truth is, you are probably responding to it based on what your brain, the environment, and your culture tell you about the color. So here, uh, this is the conclusion. Clearly, the way we respond to color is complicated business. That's, as I said before, there's a whole science to how do we respond to different colors. It's a complicated business. It's not an easy one. You may think you are choosing a red shirt just because you like the color, but the truth is you are probably responding to it based on what your brain, the environment, and your culture tell you about the color for example here we uh, uh, we like the color brown because it represents our culture our desert unlike maybe other cultures in different uh, parts of the uh, of the world so here are some words like people often uh, uh, occur in families again words just like people words have families often occur in families words are related to each other because they come from a common root so each word words come from the same root and words have family so here is uh, you see in this chart we have the nouns and the verbs try to write the correct word in the correct place for example let's answer the first one together uh, the noun is energy and the verb from this noun is yes that's correct it's energize energy the noun energize is the verb so now you get what i want you to do so the next one the verb is associate the noun is from the verb associate yes that's correct it's the uh, word association the next one creation the noun is creation what's the verb here yes the verb is to create something create creation the same family uh, the verb here is inspire, to inspire someone. So what's the noun here? Yes, that's correct. It's the noun inspiration. What about the noun symbol? A symbol for something. Yes, the verb is to symbolize. And the verb is mourn. Mourn, we just read it in the article. Mourn. Yes, that's correct. The uh, noun is mourning. And the verb, next verb is to celebrate, to celebrate something. Yes, that's correct. The noun is celebration. The last one, the noun is response and the verb is excellent. The verb is respond, response, respond. They are from the same root. So continuing to the after reading exercise here, complete the sentences with one of these words. We have the word uh, vibrant, tendency, associate, tranquility, mourning, and represents. Again, vibrant, tendency, associate, tranquility, mourning, and represents. As we see here, we have six uh, we, we have uh, we have six sentences, each one with a gap. We have to put the correct word in. But first, let's read, uh, let's read together where these words come from. Vibrant from the first paragraph. Uh, vibrant means bright, full of energy. Red is a bright, vibrant color. So red is a bright, vibrant 
color. And the second paragraph had three words, tendency, associate, and tranquility. Tendency is an inclination or uh, leaning towards something. Associating colors with nature is something people have a tendency to do. The second word, associate, re uh, relate one thing to another. To associate is to relate one thing to another, to associate them together. Here, people associate colors in nature to certain feelings. This is where it is in the article. The uh, third word, tranquility, it means calmness, peacefulness. Tranquility is a feeling that is associated with blue. And you have the last two words in the fifth paragraph, the word mourning. Uh, of course, mourning is the feeling of sadness when someone has died. Black represents mourning in most cultures, of course. Uh, represents, mean, is a symbol of, of or stands for something. Represents is a symbol of or stands for something. Here, black represents death. So these are the meanings of the words and where they came from in the article. So the first one, the dove, peace to many people. The dove, peace to many people. Yes, the dove represents peace to many people. It's a symbol for peace. She was in after her friend died. After her friend died, yes, that's correct. She was in mourning after her friend died. She has a to talk too loudly when she's on her cell phone. Excellent. She has a tendency to talk too loudly when she's on her cell phone. Number four, the colors in this painting are so that it hurts my eyes. Yes, so vibrant, so bright that it hurts my eyes. I love the of the park in the early morning. Yes, I love the tranquility of the park in the early morning. And last one, number six, after a while, the students learn to Wednesday with exams. Yes, to associate Wednesday with exams. So here, the, uh, after, uh, the, after reading the B exercise, answer the questions. The first one, where do the colors blue and red appear in nature? Look around you in nature. Where do, where does the uh, where do the colors blue and red appear in nature? Yes, the color blue appears in the sky and the sea. The color red appears in fire and blood. Number two, how do most people respond to the colors red and blue? How do most people respond to the colors red and blue? Yes, that's correct. Blue is a calming color. Blue makes you calm down. Unlike the red, it's an energizing color. It's an energizing color. Uh, number three, what does the color white represent in most cultures? In most cultures, not all cultures, no, most cultures, the color white, what does it represent? Okay, let's see together. In most cultures, white represents purity, innocence, and Goodness, unlike in China, it represents sadness and mourning. Question number four, why must a bride not wear white in China? Why must a bride not wear white in China? I just answered that. Yes, that's correct. In China, white is the color of mourning because white in China is the color of sadness, of death, of mourning. That's why the bride doesn't wear uh, white in uh, China. What does the color red represent to the Chinese? When do the Chinese wear red? So the color red, what does it represent for the Chinese culture, for the Chinese people? When do the Chinese wear red? Yes, that's uh, correct. In Chinese culture, rep red represents happiness and good luck. People wear red to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Also, the bride wears red in the Chinese uh, culture. Here is a discussion. This is a chart you have to do by yourself. Write the information in the chart below. Use the chart to discuss colors and their effect on people in groups of three or four. So divide yourselves in groups of three and four and try to answer this chart together and compare your answer. This is You are discussing colors here. The, you write first in the first column, you write the color 
where you can find it in nature when you choose the color where can you find this color in nature where do you see it in nature how do you feel about this color this is an important question when you see this color with your, with your eyes how do you feel with uh, about this color are you at ease or are you uh, uh, or uh, unlike that what uh, this color represents in your country what does this color represent in your culture or in your country so divide yourselves in groups of three or four and answer this chart then compare your answers together last uh, here uh, the cultural note the culture note it's regarding the color green let's read it together green is believed to be an easy color to see and uh, restful for the eyes and restful for the eyes that's why in the traffic light greens green means go unlike the, uh, the the red color means stop at one point in the u.s classroom blackboards were changed to green boards people thought it was easier to see the white chalk on the green board so now some classes have green boards instead of black boards street and highway signs in the u.s have uh, often have a green background with white letters when you see uh, signs in the u.s they have green backgrounds with white letters there have also been interesting experiments with children who have diff uh, who have difficulty reading research have found researchers have found that putting a transparent green overlay on top of what the child is reading often improves comprehension they believe the reason for this is uh, is that for some children the white background is too reflective and this makes it difficult for them to see the black letters so they uh, they saw they saw that when you put uh, a green background and a white writing it makes it much easier for the child to read and also to comprehend and understand. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. Thank you for listening. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu ala 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 